morning, YouTube. We are here at uh, Alamo City Harley Davidson in the beautiful San Antonio, Texas. Today, we're going to be test riding the new 2018 Fat Bob 107 edition. Uh, this bike is pretty freaking awesome. I really like the way that it looks. It caused a lot of controversy when it first came out. It's got the thick 150 tire in the front, uh, 180, I believe, in the rear. Yes, 180 in the rear. Uh, powered by the Milwaukee A 107, uh, putting out 107 foot pounds of torque, weighing in at around 600. 175 pounds in running order. This has been the, one of the bikes I'm most anxious to ride. So let's go ahead and uh, hop on and uh, see how she does. So one thing, the first thing I've, I noticed when I rode it over here is that it's got uh, these forward controls. Uh, they, they call them forwards, but they're, I mean, as you can see, my leg is pretty bent uh, for them being forward controls. They are uh, not stretched out as they are on other bikes, which I prefer. Okay, let's go. So uh, if this is the first time you're watching a video on this channel, let me tell you a little bit about myself so you have a better idea of uh, who I am. Uh, my name is Justin. I run this channel here called Bike and Bird. I am 25 years old. I've been riding my entire life. I uh, grew up racing motocross and uh, have been licensed for the street riding for about eight years now. I've uh, owned and ridden everything from uh, 1,000cc sport bikes to uh, uh, cruisers, sportsters, uh, touring bikes, you name it. Even though this test ride is being done in association with Alamo City Harley-Davidson, uh, it is in my signed contract that I can give my honest opinion on these bikes. So this is not going to be a bias review. This is going to be my pure raw review of this bike. Uh, currently I own a 2017 Street Bob 103 as well as a uh, 2014 Sportster 883. Alright, so 107, 107 foot-pounds of torque. You feel it on this bike. Weighing in about 675, you definitely feel every single uh, foot-pound of torque on this bike. Also, a very narrow rake, making it uh, very nimble to throw back and forth. Uh, also has very wide bars, which I didn't think I was going to like, but uh, so far, I'm a fan of them. Uh, also, I want to let you know that I'm going to be hopping on the interstate here in a second. It's going to be a little bit hard to hear, but don't worry. I'm only doing that for a brief seg segment. After that, I'll be hitting some uh, back roads and going through some neighborhoods to really uh, put this bike through uh, multiple different environments. Are you getting over or not? Oh my god! <laughs> this bike just wants to go, man. So right off the bat, one thing I noticed is, of course, you are getting a lot of wind, but uh, with this bike having no fairing, no windshield, that's not a shocker. Uh, that's to be expected. Uh, the next thing I noticed so far is that... Uh, is it raining? Oh my god, why am I getting wet? The next thing I notice is that uh, I'm in a very aggressive riding stance, but at the same time, it's still comfortable. It's it's the weirdest thing because like I feel like I'm I feel like I'm like this, but really my arms are straight, my wrists are, are nice and relaxed, and the bars are just wide. I think the main question is is how do I look on it though? Oh yeah, I look nice. I look real nice. Uh, so one thing I commented on on the uh, 2017 Street Bob was the seat, about how the uh, the power makes you fall off the seat. That was uh, definitely not the case when I took off on this bike. It's got a very nice solid right angle on the back of the seat that really just locks you into the seat to, uh, to handle that power very comfortably. This bike, like the rest of the Softails, of course, having six gears. Uh, I'm currently cruising in six right now. Uh, very comfortably, I might add. Doesn't feel like it's uh, pegging out the top of the rev limit or anything like that. And the overall ride of the bike, it feels very smooth. It feels very planted. So coming down off the interstate, doing some downshifting. This thing is just smooth, guys. Good God. It just feels so right. It feels so properly engineered. And uh, the fact that... The thought that keeps coming to my mind is this doesn't feel like a Harley. This this, <laughs> this doesn't feel like you would expect it to feel. It, it's, uh, but if this is the way that Harley is going in the future, I have high hopes. If they could build off of this platform and continue making bikes with this sort of uh, handling and stuff like that, they, uh, they're going to be just fine. So one thing I don't really like is this brake pedal. Uh, 
needs to be adjusted. I think you could just adjust it to, to come up higher, but so far it's, uh, I feel like I'm having to reach down too low to get it. Let's see the uh, front brakes. It does have the dual disc front brakes. Oh man. Yep, they definitely want to stop you. Ah, oh, man, that chopped rear fender sure does let water right up onto your back, though. <laughs> it's also comfortable. Like, I, even though, like I said, I feel like I'm in an aggressive stance. At, at my, like, my butt's comfortable, my wrists are comfortable, my hands are comfortable. Everything is just comfortable. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, look through the, uh, the gauge here. Uh, it does have the digital speedometer, uh, as well as just the screen here. Uh, gear indicator on the right. You know, have your... Uh, your range, your clock, RPM, uh, odometer, trip A, trip B. So your standard stuff, nothing fancy. Uh, right hand, left hand blinkers, just your standard Harley controls. But, uh, let's see how she handles in the corner. Let's see if I can get all that water off my tires first. Oh my God. That bike through that corner feels better than my 2017 Street Bob with $1,300 suspension on the back. <laughs> that is how planted that bike just felt. Oh my God. <laughs> I could get in trouble with this bike. <laughs> I don't need this bike in my life. Oh Jesus. you want to lean and it's just like that's it that's all you got <laughs> come on oh that is impressive oh man all right so we're coming up to a, a rough part of the road i'm very interested to see how this handles this uh terrain with it having the uh, stiffer suspension here honestly not too bad i would say it's as far as comfort goes, it's pretty on par with the uh, the Street Bomb. The nimbleness of this bike, though. Oh my god, even with it having 150 and 180 tires. I mean, look at this. This is dumb. God, it's, it's literally just the smallest input of the wrist just throws the bike sideways. It is, oh, it's so awesome. I got a railroad crossing up here. Let's see how it handles. Oh, very nice. Even with those uh, forward controls, it's very easy to stand up on the, the pegs to kind of avoid obstacles like that. This bike just feels planted, guys. That's the best way I can describe it. It just feels nice and planted. So we're about 15 miles in now, and uh, the seat is still very comfortable. The, the bars, I, I still like. Honestly, I would like them to be just a little bit higher, but I am a bigger guy, and they do have these, uh, they have a small amount of pullback on them, on these risers here. But uh, I could really see it uh, being very easy to, to raise these bars up. Uh, speaking of, of size, let's go ahead and, and talk about size here. Uh, that's a big question when people are looking at bikes is, is that bike going to be too big for me, too small for me? Uh, to give you some, some reference, I am 6'2", 240 pounds, uh, 32 inch inseam, so I don't have the longest of legs. My legs feel great on this bike. They're not cramped up. They're not, uh, they're not stretched out. They're, they're just not in a nice, comfortable position. Uh, same thing with my arms. I am a little bit leaned over, a little bit more leaned over than I would like to be. Uh, I have a really long torso, so that would explain why I'm leaned over. Uh, who would fit on this bike? I would say a good, a good percentage of people would fit on this bike. It only has, I think, a 27-inch seat height, 28-inch, something like that. I'll put the real seat height up here on the screen. Uh, so I'm pretty sure, I mean, anybody over, you know, 5'2", could probably pick this bike up. Actually, I have a, a buddy of mine. He is 5'6", I believe, maybe 5'8", and he has one of these bikes. He's able to, to ride it no problem. So I don't see the, uh, the height being a, a big issue for a lot of people. Man, those front brakes are good. They're very good. Got the dual disc up front. No problem merging into traffic. No problem overtaking traffic. <laughs> God, 
we're getting rained on again, guys. <laughs> this is Texas for you, though. Raining when the sun's out. Man, this bike handles so good. It handles, honestly, like a sport touring bike. For for anyone who's ever ridden one of those, uh, it really it really feels similar as far as the nimbleness of it. The positioning, of course, is completely different, but uh, just the capabilities of what you can do with it are very uh, sport touring esque. So we're getting into a little bit more of a uh, suburban, urban style uh, environment here. Uh, just to kind of see how it uh, handles, you know, going through traffic and stuff like that. Uh, also, one thing I did want to point out is that the way that this bike sits, my thighs are close to the top of the rocker box, but it's not putting out nearly as much heat as the 103 is used to. Uh, it's one thing that these Milwaukee 107s have really uh, just blown my mind about is how cool they stay. But of course, with them being uh, partially liquid cooled, it, it would make sense how much to go right through that puddle, guys. <laughs> yeah. Very smooth on the downshifts too. I've noticed that with pretty much all of the Milwaukee 8s, the, the downshifting is just very smooth. So one thing I have noticed with this bike is you do get a lot better feedback in the handlebars as far as the vibration and th what the bike's doing and things like that, um, as opposed to some of the other bikes. Uh, even the Street Bob 107 uh, did not have nearly the amount of uh, feedback in the bars. Now, a lot of people, uh, when they took a lot of the vibration out of the bars, were actually mad, which to me makes no sense. I mean, <laughs> less fatigue on your hands, less fatigue on your arms, but uh, I think a lot of that feedback was coming from some of the older generation that just, you know, love that, that bone jarring shake of a Harley, which, don't get me wrong, it's definitely a, a trait that Harleys possess, but uh, as far as making the bikes better and putting better technology into the bikes, I feel like less vibration is, is pretty good. But I will say, out of the soft tails that I've ridden, uh, I'm getting the most shake in the bars from this bike, which uh, it's not. Uh, it's it's still not up to uh, what the uh, 103s had. It's definitely not to that point. But out of the uh, newer 2018s, this is uh, this has been the shakiest so far. So let me go ahead and answer the two uh, questions I always get asked on these kind of videos, and that's: uh, Is this a good beginner's bike? And uh, who would this be a good bike for? So as far as beginner's bike, I will say the same thing I say with, with a lot of those questions is, a bike can only get you into as much trouble as you allow it to. If you respect the size of the bike and respect the power of the bike, uh, you're not gonna get into trouble. But if you, you know, act immature and try to push your limits right outside of your abilities, you're gonna get hurt. As far as weight goes, this is a very manageable weight, especially if you're a larger guy or girl. Uh, this uh, this weight is definitely manageable. Now for, I don't know, a 16-year-old kid or something like that, probably not the best idea. Which brings me to, who is this bike for? Honestly, although I feel like this bike is directly targeted at Harley's younger demographic, I feel like some older generations that got on this bike would find it extremely fun. I feel like a lot of people, if they just gave this bike a chance and uh, didn't ride it off because of its, its you know, futuristic looks and kind of pushing the boundaries of what Harley is known for, would really enjoy this bike. I honestly have not spoken to a single person who has ridden this bike and not liked it. And that's that's from podcasts, personal experience, YouTube videos. I don't know of anybody that dislikes this bike. Oh, it just looks good too. Also, one thing I, I noticed about this bike is I feel safe on it. I know that's a weird thing to say about bikes since they're, you know, obviously very dangerous, but like I feel like cars can see me better. I don't know why. I, I'm not sitting taller than I do on my, my street bob or anything like that, but I guess because more my body is showing and I've got such good handling, I feel like I could avoid a lot more uh, close calls or something like that as opposed to on my uh, street bob. Uh, what do I think this bike would be best suited for? Honestly, this bike is pretty versatile. I feel like it would be great in an urban environment. Uh, so if you're, you know, do a lot of city riding, I also think it could it could really carve up the canyons, carve up the twisties. But the only thing I see it's kind of lacking in is uh, long distance touring, just because that's not what this bike is made for. 
Alright guys, sorry that video ended so abruptly. I, I ran out of space on my memory card, but I didn't really miss much. I did get off the bike, realized it was filthy as hell. Uh, we're back here at Alamo City Harley-Davidson. Uh, once again, huge shout out to Alamo City for letting me do these uh, these demos on this bike. Overall thoughts on the bike is I absolutely love this bike. Uh, the 107 has plenty of power to uh, really have some fun. The 107s are so much quicker than the 103s. It's, it's night and day difference, guys. It really is. Even with my 103 with upgrades, a tune, exhaust, intake is not as fast as this bike. This bike just handles awesome. It looks awesome. Uh, power is awesome on it. Everything about this bike is awesome. So if you've got any questions about this bike, please feel free to put them down in the comment section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability or get someone else who can answer it better than I can. Other than that, guys, if you're in the San Antonio area, if you come down to Alamo City Harley-Davidson, let them know Bike and Bird sent you. It really does help me out. It, it allows them to do more things like this for me. So please do that. It really does help out the channel. Also, uh, if you like this video or found it informational in any way, please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do upload three videos a week, every single week. And other than that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.